How's it going everybody and you're welcome to this section where we'll learn about Python functions. We're going to learn how to create functions, create functions that return an argument and then see how we can create our own custom functions. We'll also finally close this section up by looking at some examples. So uh, again in our last lesson we learned about uh, dictionaries. If you'd like to find out more about dictionaries you can click the link on that's actually shown and you can learn about more dictionaries. So this time around let's go ahead and learn about Python functions. So I'll create a new file, quickly click on uh, new, I don't want to use this one, I'll just click on new file and I'll call this 14 underscore functions underscore python dot py and with that let's go ahead and close this. So a function is used to group a block of code, block of code together. Functions can return a value and they can take one or more inputs or no inputs as argument. Every function in Python returns an object. If it doesn't return an object, it returns none. So uh, basically functions works, the way functions works is that they are hidden from the user. So you don't really need to know how a function was created for you to know how to use it. It's the same way and it's quite similar to how you don't need to know how the gas compression ratio of a car works to know how to drive a car. So all this is talk, let's see an example. We'll begin by looking at the Python's uh, len method. So I'm just going to create a title here and see working with functions just so we can have a nice title to work with. So let's see, let's use our Python's built-in len method. So let's call len and len is used to get the length of an iterable object like a string, a list, a dictionary. You can use uh, that to get it. So let's create a list and I'll set that list and I'll just create one item in the list and I'll just say today is a good day for coding. So just a simple statement. So to actually get the length of this list, we could create a new variable. Let's say length of list is going to be equal to the len function and it's going to accept one parameter which is the list or the iterable data type. And to see our results, let's print out the length of list. Again, I'll make this slightly bigger. I'll hold Control and plus to make this uh, kind of like wide so we can all uh, see that. So if I save this and run this script right here, let's see what our output is going to be. So we actually get one because we have one item in that uh, list. Uh, another nice thing to do is that we could actually uh, do something like uh, we can make this more presentable. So let's print out the same results using an F string and we actually say uh, the length of the list is and then we'll just pass in that variable called length of list like so. So if we save this and run it as well we actually, it actually, we actually have an output that says the length of the list is one. So this is actually a very nice way and it's actually much more clear to do that. So let's do something here. Let's create a variable called five. So I'll say number equals to five. And we know that the len method is going to return an integer as output. If there's nothing in the list, it's going to return zero. So what we can actually do is to actually work with the results we get from the uh, length of list. So here I'm going to create a variable. Let's call that add the number five and this will be equal to our length of list then plus this number. So just by looking at this we know our result is going to be six. So let's print out our result here and let's say uh, we took and let's just take that uh, number like so and added to it. So we took that number and added to it. So let's see now we have and I'll bring out another format specifier which is an integer and then to see our results we'll bring in our format specifier 
And then since we have two values, let's pass in number, comma, the second value we called add five. Like so. So let's save that. And also, if you want to learn about format specifiers and how you can format your output in Python, you can check out this lesson on format specifiers. So here, let's save this and let's run this. So it says uh, we took five and added to it. Now we have six. So it's actually picking the placeholder here and picking the placeholder here as well. So that's why when we said we took and used the format specifier to pick up a number, it's actually going to you know replace it with this value, which is this variable we've created called number right here. So now let's see how we can create our own function. So let's uh, let me just put a header here and creating our own functions. So Python has a lot of built-in functions like the land, the uh, str function. It also has the, uh, the uh, list. And it has a lot of built-in functions. So let's go ahead and create our own. So the first thing I'll do is to, uh, let's create an empty function that doesn't do anything. So to create a function, you use the keyword called df, which is to define. And we'll just call this a dummy function. And then you end that with a column. And when you press the return key, it expects you to do something. Now, if you have a function and you don't know what you want that function to do yet, basically, let's say you're creating a program, you can use the keyword pass. And this will just, you know, kind of like give you uh, an empty function. And then if you call to call a function, you just call, use the function name. So let's say calling a function. And let's not forget the parentheses as well when you're creating a function. So let's just call this, and we can actually see this called dummy function right here. Um, using Visual Studio Code, the IntelliSense is going to let me know that I have a function called dummy function. So if I click on that with the parentheses and save that, we're not going to see anything. And what I'll do is to quickly uh, comment this out so it doesn't clutter our output. And I think I'll get into the habit of commenting out any print methods so we uh it's actually making it difficult for me to write that okay good that's it so let's run this and so we don't have any uh output if i clear the screen and run this program again we can see we don't have any output because the function is not doing anything so let's create a function that actually does something right now so uh let's just get down here and see function that does something like so. I'll just save this. So I'm going to create a function that uh, answers a greeting or creates a greeting. So I'm just going to say dev say hello. And then within that function, I'll pass in an object or an ar argument or a parameter. I'm just going to call that a greeting. So basically this means when I'm running this function, I need to provide a specific greeting. I'm just going to say print greeting. So just right here, when I'm about to call the function, I'll just click this so we can see this more clearly. I am going to say uh, calling the function, say hello, and I'll pass in the message right now. So I'll just say hi. So if we run this, we should actually see hi on the screen. This method takes one argument, it takes a string and it displays that screen to the user. So and uh, we've actually called that uh, function. So you can create a function without an argument and then still have it display something because in the body of the function, you can tell the function what to do. So for instance, let's create a function, let's say uh, define, and I call that I don't argue. Now this is an empty function, but I'll pass in a, uh, I'll create a print method. Okay. I don't know why uh, this is not, uh, okay, good. So I'll just say uh, print and within the body of this, I'll just see within the parentheses of our print statement, say I am a cool person. So if we call our function, I don't argue, we're calling the function now, 
Even if I didn't pass any argument to that function, it's going to do what it's told to do, and it's told to print out I'm a cool person as well. So that's just the uh, difference here. Here we're saying we need something here called a greeting, and when we call that function, it's going to display that. Here we don't have anything, but within the body of our function, we're telling it to do something, which is to just uh, print out the uh, object right here. So now let's look at a, an example of a function that returns a result, right? So let's uh, create a heading for that. Uh, let's see, a function returns a result. And this is quite tricky, but I promise you when you practice this a while, you won't actually uh, get confused. So let's do something fun here and then we'll do a serious example. So I'm just gonna say uh, define a function called return return of the terminator, like so. And then we are simply going to print out, I'm back. That's it. So, uh, and here, what we're actually going to do is, uh, see, let's do this. Let's say, uh, let's say guess who's back. Let's call this, uh, let's say guess who's back and I'll get rid of this. Now within this method, I'm going to say return I'm back. So each time we run this function, it's going to return this function called I'm back. So let's call our function. Let's say return of the terminator. And let's see what the output is going to be. So if I do a control and F5, it says guess who's back, but I haven't seen the return I'm back. Now the function ran successfully and it actually returned the statement I'm back. If you want to see the output of the statement, you have to actually print the entire function. When you print a function, remember, a function will always return a value. So what we're actually going to do is to do this. I'm going to say print, changes to print, and let's save this and let's run it. Now we actually see something strange happening here. First, we told the function to print out guess who's back without, uh, with a return, but because we are inside a print function, it's actually returning the results of that function. So before you can use the results of a function, you have to store it as a variable to use it. All right, so let's go ahead and we can call a function from another function. Here, the print method is returning another function called the return for the terminator. Let's go ahead and see another example. So say we want to uh, calculate the area of a circle. Now the formula to do that is pi r squared. So I'll create a variable called pi and I'll set that to 3.14 and I'll create a radius is going to be equal to the small r and equal to, uh, let's say 2.6. I could simply call, say r equals 2.6, but I want everyone to know that I'm using a value called a radius. Now our area is going to be equal to pi r squared. So pi multiplied by, and since I'm doing uh, an expression, I'll just say r raised to the power of, uh, Two. So basically that's what uh, that means. Let's, let me create a constant. Let's say uh, constant equals two. So here I'll just say constant because honestly, I don't want to have, you know, uh, magic numbers appear in the function. So now that we have this area, we can simply print out the area and say uh, area of the circle is, and I'll just use our format specifier and I'll say uh, square meters like so. And here I'll do a format specifier and return the area of our method like so. 
So if we run this, we can see the area of the circle is 21 square meters, which is the last result of the uh, output. So what we can actually do as well is to define a function called area that returns a radius. So let's see how we can create this using a function. So this is the normal way we've been doing it. Let's see uh, using a function to calculate area. Now a function would allow you to repeat a specific task over and over again. So first let's use the keyword def and let's call the function area and within our area we are going to have one uh, argument or one parameter which is going to be the radius so let's call this uh, radius like so because we're going to be returning that radius of that uh, circle so here what I'm going to do is to create my pi I'm going to set that to 3.14 and I'm going to create a, another variable called area called area and here I'll just do pi multiplied by the radius and raised to the power of 2. So next I'm going to say uh, I'm going to print out the area of the circle. So I'm just going to say print and let's use an F string area of the circle. So we're actually saying the area of the circle is the area in square meters. So let's call this function multiple times. So I'm going to call the first area. I'm going to say zero point to three and I'll call area again and I'll say 2.22 and I'll call area again and I'll say 12.45 or any other value feel free to change the value so what we actually have here is we're calling the area function three times and passing in different parameters and it's going to take in each of these radius and perform that calculation and return that result so if we run this we can actually see area here uh, four times right we can actually see that uh, output right here if I wanted to uh, print out this area let's make this to uh, two significant figures let's just do a point to F so we don't have the uh, results you know displaying all that so we just have two decimal points after the uh, whole uh, number in the front right here so that's how we can work with uh, uh, areas like so. We can use a return method. Let's see how we can modify this to use a return and then use that uh, return. So let's switch up. Let's say uh, using the area, using area and return method. Like so. So let's see how we can work with this like that. So I'll create another function. So I'll just say area return. And this is going to accept a radius as a parameter. And then next, let's add a statement, a doc string that tells us what the function does. So let's say it calculates the area of a circle like so so let's bring create our variables let's say pi is 3.14 and let's say our area is equal to pi multiplied by the radius raised to the power of 2 and what I'm going to do is to return area so it means each time we run this function it's going to return the result of this calculation and store it in memory right and then we can have access to that right here so let's call our function here so let's say result is going to be equal to our area return 
and then we'll specify let's say uh, 0 0.23 for that radius and then out here I'm going to print out the result I'm just going to say f string say the result of the so let's just say the area is and then we'll have result like so cool so uh, yeah so if we save this and run it so we have the area is 0 0.16610 we know this is the last one we're working with because we haven't uh, specified the number of decimal places to return that result now here's the fun thing we know that we actually have a result that returns this area we can multiply this value by a hundred and whatever result of this calculation is from this return area it will multiply it by a hundred so let's run that and we can actually see we have 16.61 so there's uh, it's a good time now to mention something called the scope we have a global scope which is accessed anywhere if we create any variable let's get back to our program and we have this variable called number I can actually access this variable here and say uh, let's say multiplied by number so this is a global variable because it can be accessed anyway but if I create a variable within a function it's a local function local variable that's bound to that function so I cannot use this variable called pi outside because I've already uh, I'm bounding this variable to this function only so it's only this variable that can call this function once you create a variable inside a function you cannot uh, use that for instance let's try something here let's try to uh, print out a number so I'm creating a variable called print num and I'm just going to say x equals 29 like so so if I get over here or if I go here and I say uh, print X if I call this method called print num whoops if I call this method called print num I should just see the results of this okay good I'm seeing uh, 29 good so I'm printing num I'm seeing uh, 29 if I create another variable just outside here and I say y equals 77 and I come over here and try to print out y before I even run this program I should be okay actually y is a uh, it's a global scope so y is going to work as well so uh, if we actually try to access a variable let's say for instance I'm trying to uh, print out this uh, let's say let's try to print out uh, let me just get let me just put this back to X and over here in our print method let me just try to print out X like so so if I run this it says name X is not defined because X is defined within a local scope in a function called print num and I can't access that method because I cannot reach that uh, method so that's something to uh, keep in mind if you're creating a uh, variable within a function that is only built to work for that function then you can create a local variable in a functions local scope but if you want to use the values in that function you can make that uh, available everywhere and then finally let's create a function that multiplies two numbers and then we'll use our return so here I'm just simply going to save and let's say a uh, program that multiplies two numbers and we'll just wrap this up and put everything we've actually uh, learned so first let's create a method called def let's say uh, multiply two numbers and it's going to take a uh, first num and a uh, second num as arguments so that means this method is going to accept 
two arguments. So I'm simply going to just print out a very nice console art <laughs> just to see this. So that's the first thing that will come out. And then let's also print out a uh, welcome to the user. Let's say uh, welcome to the number multiplier program. So now that I've done that, let's uh, ask the user to enter the first number. So let's say ask user to enter the first number like so. So I'll just call that uh, first num and let's convert this to a float and then we'll tell the user to uh, input and uh, let's say uh, enter the first number. So after the user enters the first number, we'll actually ask the user to enter the second number again. So let's ask user to enter the second number. So let's say second num is going to be equal to a float input let's say uh, enter the second number like so so now we ask the user to enter the second number let's store the multiplication of the first number and second number in a variable called this result so let's say storing the value of the multiplication whoops All right, I accidentally uh, pressed my caps key. So let's say result is going to be equal to our first num. Uh, let's say first num multiplied by our second num, like so. And what we are going to do after multiplying our first number by our second number is to uh, print out the output. So let's say print and I'll use an F string and I'll say multiplying first number by and I'll create, I'll say a second number, which is we called second num. So we're going to get and then let's print out our result like so and our result we want our results to be in uh, let's say 3f just three significant significant figures and then let's return our results so next now that we've created our function and now one quick thing to remember is you remember your indentation so you have to call your method from the left indent basically not the same line as this you shouldn't call your method let's say like this multiply numbers multiply two numbers and let's say uh, we have 12 and 0 0.23 if you do that you're going to get an error so you need to indent this to the left and you should be uh, good to go I'm just going to say calling the multiply method and saving this so if we have multiply two numbers, let's even do this uh, multiply two numbers again and we'll just do 0 0.89 by uh, let's say 12.9. So we're going to call the multiply two number function twice. So it asked me to enter the first number. Now here's the thing, the numbers we passed into the method are going to be ignored because it just needs two numbers for you to pass in because you said, hey, I have a function that accepts two arguments, two parameters. You can pass in any number in this world, but when the program is running, it's going to run, use the live numbers you're specifying to that function. So the first one is 12, 0 0.34, and we can actually see the result is 0 0.48, and we're actually running that again, so 12 and 0.56. It's going to use these values, the method, 
is when the method is running live, it's not going to use these built in uh, values we put here. We could even just use zeros right here and our function is still going, oops, is still going to uh, perform, you know, uh, when it's running, it's going to ignore these zeros like so. If we leave it empty, we're going to get an error because if the function needs arguments to work. So let's say, let's leave this one empty and then run this function again. So let's run the first one and over here, let's say I have 12 and 12. We have 144, but the next one is going to return errors because it says uh, multiply two numbers, missing two required positional arguments, first num and second num. So you have to provide something or else the function is not going to uh, work. So what we're going to do is to actually use the value of our return. Because remember, to use return, we have to save our function in a variable. So let's say our solution let's say solution one is going to be equal to multiply two numbers and I'll just use any empty uh, placeholders and I'll comment these out because I don't want this to uh, to run so I'll just comment these out like so so now that I have multiply two numbers as solution one let's print out the uh, results and what I'm also going to do is to multiply it by a variable. So let's say I have a, let's say keep, keep it 100 and I'll make this 100. So this is a variable called 100. Whatever the result is, and I'm returning that result multiplied by 100. So basically I'm taking the value that our method is restoring, is returning because I'm storing it in a variable and I'm multiplying that value by 100. So if, uh, if uh, let's run this function and then what we're going to do is to pass in two values that will make sure we know what we're doing. Let's say, let's use five, right? By five. So we get 25, multiplying five by five, we get 25. So, oh, I haven't, uh, sorry guys, I haven't printed out the uh, results. So let's uh, print out our results. So let's just say uh, results for solution one equals and we'll use a format specifier and then right here I'm going to just pass in the variable which is the solution one I'll just say solution one and then save this and let's run it so it wants us to enter the first number. Let's try it again. Let's try five, multiply by five. Now the uh, results of multiplying five by five, we get 25, but our results for solution one is 2,500. It is 2,500 because we are multiplying 100 by 25. So it means solution one understands and knows that this function returns a result called 25 and then it's using that value to multiply the results by 100. So we just have this but it knows the solution, the result is 25 and then it's multiplying it by 100. So uh, basically that's how you can create functions in Python. Python has built in functions but you can create your own functions. You can create functions that return a value so that you can use them. You can create functions that have parameters. You can call those parameters and you can even create a function that you can get an input from the user and use that input so you don't, you save the user from always hard coding and type in typing in these examples manually. So I hope this gives you an idea of how functions work in Python. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, in the comment section, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I'm going to provide all this code files. They're available, they're free, and I'm going to add more comments to these code files, code files so they are much more readable. Once again, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next lesson.